This is a case of a locked in syndrome, which you see in uh, patients with brainstem bleed. Now, this patient, as you can see on the screen, is able to move the eyeball up and down on command. But uh, when the patient has a locked in syndrome, the patient has complete body paralysis. What I mean is that the patient is not able to move any part of the body. Uh, so what I'm going to show you is the scan of this patient and I'm going to show you the area where the exact bleed has happened. That's the bright white area, which we call as a hyper dense area on a CT scan. That is the bleeding which you can see on the screen. Now, how to identify the bleeding level, whether it's midbrain pons or medulla, is you go a little down and locate the cervical vertebra like that, and that's the spinal cord. So as you keep coming higher up, that spinal cord, the moment you see the cerebellum here, like this, that becomes the medulla. So as you keep going higher up again, the medulla becomes more broader and circular, that is the pons, and you'll start seeing the bleed right there. Now that's the hyperdense area. Now this bleed has happened because of the acute sharp rise in the patient's blood pressure which led to the rupture of the pontine vessels that has led to an infarct in the area. That's the Mickey Mouse appearance of the midbrain. So the midbrain looks very clear. So this is the sagittal scan of the patient's brain. That's the midbrain above. That's the pons in the middle with the hyperdense bleed. And that's the medulla down there. And that's the spinal cord below. Now, the most important features of the locked in syndrome are that the patient has completely intact hearing. He can hear everything, he can see everything, he can feel everything, but at the same time, he or she cannot move a single muscle of the body except for that upper and the uh, lower movement of the eyeball. The patient also cannot move it medially or laterally outside and inside. So if the patient has to communicate with someone, uh, if you're going to command the patient, the patient either closes, that is upward and downward movement. That is how the patient communicates. Now the patient, uh, what you can see on the screen is the uh, scan taken a month later of the supportive treatment. The supportive treatment being the ventilatory support, then uh, doing getting a tracheostomy done, putting the patient on tracheostomy ventilation and maintaining the blood pressure and the vitals. So you can see the scan, there is no hyperdensity of any sort. The bleeding has completely resolved and the patient still is gradually improving and uh, sometimes the patient uh, not, may not even survive.